I want to steer you toward a book that I think you are going to find uh, to be highly fascinating. It's called The General and the Genius, Groves and Oppenheimer, the Unlikely Partnership that Built the Atomic Bomb. The author, best-selling author, James Cadet, is on the line with us right now. James, good morning to you. Good morning to you as well. Thanks for having me on. Oh, and thanks for taking time to be on with us. Best-selling novelist, author of two previous books about Los Alamos and the Manhattan Project. And uh, I think it's fascinating. You were a consultant at Los Alamos. Top secret clearance evaluating classified documents in the archives for their historical value. For some reason, I picture you in a dark room with a flashlight looking things over. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it was a dark room, but there was a, it was a light on the top of the ceiling, a 60-watt bulb. It wasn't too bright. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Meticulously researched. You're going you're gonna to learn a whole lot of things about, uh, about America's effort in World War II to build the, the ultimate weapon, the Manhattan Project, and all that went into it, and the, and the two guys behind it, Leslie Groves and, of course, Robert Oppenheimer, who couldn't have been more different guys, could they? No, they were very different. Groves was a seventh-generation American, graduated from West Point conservative, highly effective uh, engineer for the Corps of Engineers. Most people don't know he built the Pentagon building at record time and under budget. Uh, Oppenheimer, New York, liberal, Jewish, a theoretical physicist, he wealthy. He didn't even realize the stock market crashed for about a year. Uh, he just, you know, he, he, his world was a blackboard and chalk and, and graduate students. So the, the, they never would have sat down for a beer or a cup of coffee except for World War II, and that turned out to be very fortunate for America. And you talk about uh, General Groves having the Pentagon built, you know, on time and, uh, and under budget. That would disqualify him in today's world, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. In fact, you know, interestingly, I'm not sure that we could build a bomb. Uh, they spent $2 billion on the Manhattan Project. That's wartime dollars. I don't think we could build a bomb in two and a half years today, given the same set of circumstances. But... Given the way we work with codes and laws, I, I just don't know that we could have done it. It was a unique World War II experience. Could I ask that? You know, the, the time frame on the uh, development of about uh, two and a half years at the time was, was that considered quick? Was that ahead of schedule? How did the the process of getting from scratch to final product move about? The way I think the way they Groves did two things that was very first he did three things. First of all, he was willing to spend whatever it took. Second, he had a he had, as people said of him, a weakness for good men. So he really did pick good people. Oppenheimer was one of them. And the third, he was really profoundly good at making decisions, as it turns out, the right decisions. I think that America would have gotten the bomb without Groves or without Oppenheimer, but I don't think it would have happened in two and a half years. And they went from knowing almost nothing, just theories about atomic fission, to actually, yesterday, of course, was the 70th anniversary of Hiroshima. So in two and a half years, they went from mathematical calculations on a blackboard to a bomb falling out of the B-29 called Enola Gay. Which, you know, when you consider that sort of breakthrough in that sort of time period, it's, it, it's mind-blowing even today. Now, it's something else that uh, I gather that I don't think a lot of people know, and I, I certainly didn't know it before having a look at the book. The, the decision to drop the bomb was made pre-Harry Truman. Truman gets, all, you know, uh, the credit or the blame, depending on who you're talking to, about dropping of the bombs. But this decision had already been preordained, hadn't it? I think, I think for the most part. I think there was so much momentum behind it. Um, Roosevelt, for example, in uh, December of 44, asked Groves if the bomb would be ready in 1945, early in 45, because he wanted to use it in Germany to end the war. So if, if Roosevelt was willing to use the bomb, it's unlikely that Truman would have changed that. There was just simply too much momentum. And let's face it, the war in the Pacific, Iwo Jima, Okinawa, those were the worst battles of World War II in terms of American losses. With us, James Gadetka, the author of the new book, The General and the Genius Groves in Oppenheimer, their unlikely partnership that built the atom bomb. It's Ronnie and Scott on WROK. So after the, after the uh, uh, guys who are in place, Groves and Oppenheimer, well, they, they can't do this all alone. Others are also working on the project. What was the, uh, the process like for recruitment and hiring of those who also worked alongside the two gentlemen? Well, uh, the Manhattan Project itself was a huge project. I mean, they had massive plants in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Hanford, Washington. Over a half a million people worked on the Manhattan Project. But the bomb itself was, and, and those people were largely recruited from local communities. They knew that they were working on a project for the war, but they had absolutely no idea what they were doing. Women would watch a dial, and if the dial moved left, they would turn a knob right, if the, and vice versa. 
but they didn't know what was behind the, the dial. The, the bomb was actually designed and built on a mountaintop in, Los Al- in New Mexico called Los Alamos. And there were about 6,500 uh, scientists and engineers. And most of those men were recruited simply by saying, look, we need you, we need your skill, you're a metallurgist, we need you for a project that if it works, will end the war. And then once they got to Los Alamos, then they were told, well, the project is to make an atomic bomb. The book is The General and the Genius, Groves and Oppenheimer, the unlikely partnership that built the atom bomb. James Konetka is the, uh, is the author. Um, with, with Groves being in charge, when you're in charge of a product uh, of this scale and you talk about the amount of people that, uh, that, that, that were, were working on it, he was in charge of it from top down. How, how does a guy manage to oversee a project of that magnitude? Yeah, he was phenomenal. Um, I I went through you know his papers several times in the National Archives, and his secretary kept a, kept a daily record of all of his phone calls and meetings. And on any given day, he might have a hundred, hundred and twenty phone calls. He might have twenty or thirty meetings. Sometimes he'd run have to run from his office to the Pentagon or to the White House. Uh, he was phenomenally productive. Um, and and even more impressive is that. Even though he had very good men to run these large production plants in Tennessee and Washington State, he personally chose to run Los Alamos. Robert Oppenheimer reported to him, and I think that's how much he cared about it. He didn't, you might say he overmanaged, but it turns out the management he applied was just right. And James, uh, the, under the development, uh, uh, took two and a half years, as, as we mentioned. One of the reasons why, perhaps, is because of a, a contribution from Groves, right? The, uh, the idea to uh, take a multi-track approach to problem solving. So they were kind of working on different ideas a- at all times, right? Yes, and I think that was, what he told the scientists was very simple. He said, look, if there are two or three approaches to the problem, try them all. And we'll pick the one that works best and can get done the quickest. And that was something that scientists were very unfamiliar with. In the 1930s, a scientist might be given $500 or $1,000 to do a complicated experiment. Suddenly they could write a check for whatever they wanted. But they were told, I'm going to give you whatever you need, but you need to get this done as quickly as possible. And there were moments when Groves had to come and literally force Oppenheimer to make decisions because everything was going so slowly. Both men wanted the bomb ready before the end of the war. Both men wanted the bomb to be used. And, and, and to break things down, uh, Groves was basically given the task, all right, let's beat the Nazis to the atomic bomb. How close was that race actually? Well, it wasn't really. Um, it started out, yes, because fission, nuclear fission, the secret of the atomic bomb, was actually discovered in Germany in December of 1938. So every physicist around the world, as soon as they heard about this breakthrough, knew that fission could generate electricity or power a ship, but could also create an enormous explosion. And many of the world's best uh, uh, scientists actually were in German. Fortunately for us, Hitler made a lot of bad decisions, and one of the two of them were he forced out a lot of these scientists because they were Jewish, but also because he never understood the concept of an atomic bomb. He understood rockets, which is why he pumped the money into the V-2. But uh, in the end, we benefited from that. It was very clear by 1944 that the Germans were not going to have a weapon. That's, that's when scientists, the military, and Secretary of State all began to look at Japan as the likely target. James Kadetka with us. The General and the Genius is his book. It's Riley and Scott here on WRK. Now, if I have my, my dates correct, the, the first detonation of a nuclear weapon, July 16th, 1945, part of the Manhattan Project. That was Trinity. And that was, what, two weeks or so before the actual dropping of the bombs on Japan. How much uncertainty went uh, or was going on before that first test? And how certain were they were were they that things would go okay uh, when they attacked Japan? Well, I think the test was necessary to prove the concept of implosion. So it's a way that you compress plutonium because a lot more of that material is going to be available and consequently more bombs. They really didn't know. Theory said yes, experiments said yes, but until you actually fired a bomb off. But here was the challenge. Even when the bomb was in New Mexico, and by the way, everybody was stunned at the explosion. It was literally like creating a new sun on Earth. 
But what was a lot, what was scared everybody is that the bomb, you had to make the bomb into something you could deliver. It had to be a weapon, which meant you put it inside a metal case and you had to provide electrical power. And this is before computer chips. This is when they used car batteries and vacuum tubes. So the concern was, even if the bomb was on the plane and the plane was caught over Hiroshima and dropped it, they didn't know until it actually went off if the bomb had survived the trip. So really, that's how new everything was. Until the bombs were dropped and exploded, then everybody really did breathe a sigh of relief. And when those bombs did explode and, and when Japan surrendered and World War II ended, uh, what became of the general and the genius? The general uh, continued to run the Manhattan Project for two years. He then was given another assignment. He had offended, unfortunately, a lot of people, including fellow officers along the way. He met for his, um, I guess, his job performance review with Eisenhower, who was brought back from Europe. And Eisenhower basically said, you know, you're not going anywhere else. You've offended people. And Rose submitted his resignation the next day. And so he spent the rest of his career in private industry. Oppenheimer became the darling of the press. He got a lot of attention. He was on the cover of Life as the father of the atomic bomb. He became very involved in negotiations to create the Atomic Energy Commission, the civilian agency to control atomic weapons. But then he had a turn of, um, I guess, not of conscience, but of concern. He became concerned with the development of powerful weapons and because he was afraid he knew that eventually other countries would have them. And so uh, he fell out of favor in the middle 1950s. He lost his security clearance, and he died 10 years later of throat cancer. Okay, well, all right, we're, we look at the zenith of their careers right here in this book. You're going to want to grab this because, you know, they, everybody's heard, oh, well, I've heard this, well, I've heard that. Well, this book will tell you whether what you heard was actually accurate and will uh, clue you in on some things you didn't know. The General and the Genius, Groves and Oppenheimer, the unlikely partnership that built the atom bomb. James Gnecca, thanks a lot for taking time for us this morning. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>